Hey guys, it's Rage. So today I'm going to show you what gear you need to get for Time Walking Mage Tower as a Vengeance or Havoc Demon Hunter. I'm going to go through gear, gems, enchants and weapons as well as consumables like flask oils and pots. A quick disclaimer, this is not necessary in order for you to enter Mage Tower. However, a few people on the PTR have said that the Mage Tower is actually quite trivial. So with that being said, I think it may be a good idea to reference this video later on if you enter the Mage Tower and find that you're struggling a little bit, or if you just want to have a complete blaze through the Mage Tower, no issues whatsoever. Collecting these gear pieces and weapon pieces, as well as the enchants and gems, will give you that little bit of extra boost and probably that little bit of help that you need to get it finished. Now that that's out of the way, let's begin. We're going to start with gear. The way the gear works for the Mage Tower is that Chromie Time gear needs to be focused. However, to get Chromie Time gear, you need a friend at level 39 to 45 to be eligible to loot the boss drops, and then this item is handed to you by your friend. The reason why your friend will loot it and not you is because if your friend loots it, the overall eye level will be below 50, and that's really important for certain items to be enchanted. So it needs to be a low enough eye level to be enchanted, because for example, the best neck enchants that exists are legion level, meaning you need a legion eye level 50 or below in order for it to be eligible to enchant. It also needs lots and lots of sockets because the overall eye level is scaled to 50. There's also a bunch of disabled procs for gear. So Shadowlands, BFA, Legion, Ward, and Missum Daria Legend gear will not work, including Azerite gear. Shadowlands Shard of Dominations and Shadowlands Covenant abilities will not work. And Miss and Mandaria Meta Gem effects will not work either. So there's a lot of disabled procs, including legendary weapons. So Sulfurous Hand of Ragnaros will be disabled, Thunderfury Vessel Blade of the Windseeker, Warglazer Azanoth, Valinir Hammer of the Ancient Kings, Shadowmoor, Dragonwrath, and Veil Shall Air. Ray Shall... <laughs> Ray Shall Air. You can use these weapons, so if you have them already, go in with them, but they're just disabled procs for this mage shower. Essentially, all legendary weapons that have a proc will be disabled, apart from the rogue daggers, because you guys don't have a proc. So with that kind of analogy, you can go and focus your own chromie time gear for any class whatsoever. But let's go and focus on the havoc and vengeance gear specifically. There isn't that much of a difference between the two, to be honest, which is great if you're thinking of going in as havoc and vengeance. So here we go. First up is the head. The Druidic Helmet of Second Sight is what you're going to want to get. It's a quest item, and it actually begins in Shadow Moon Valley in the Outland. Burning Crusade, so level 70, you may already have done it. It's very, very simple. It's basically a, first of all, three quest chain, and then you go to another guy called Terran Gorefield, and you do his set of quests. It's actually a really interesting quest line, so if you've not done it already, I do very, very, very recommend it. It's very, very quick as well. And then you get your first piece. Congratulations. It's got three sockets, yellow socket, blue socket, and another blue socket with a socket bonus. Your next piece is the Heart of Azeroth for your neck. The Heart of Azeroth obviously comes from BFA. If you've done it before, you've probably got it in your bank. If you haven't done it before, it's a shortest quest line. There's not too much to do. Um, it'd probably be done in about 20, 30 minutes or so. Again, the procs don't work with Heart of Azeroth, but the stats that it gives you is really, really, really good. So get that if you've not already got it. Okay. Your back piece again is from BFA. So this is the Ashar Karmas Shroud of Resolve. This is the legendary cloak that you had to wear in order to defeat Nazoth at the end of BFA. Again, none of the procs work, but the stats alone are really, really good. If you don't have this, it's very, very similar to the Half Azeroth. Very, very, very simple um, quest line. It's actually the Black Empire campaign, and it doesn't take too long at all. You do need to get it to rank 12 in order for it to be the best that it possibly can, but anything after that doesn't matter. So you do not need to do um, the Nightmare Assaults. Like, don't bother with that. Don't worry, you don't have to do that. Moving on to the first chromie time piece now this is the shoulders this is the mantle of paranold so this is where you're going to want to grow and grab your buddy at level 39 or 45 or if you have an alt account just bring that in with you but you're going to want to head to the oldsbrad foothills in the caverns of time and this is a drop from the epo hunter next up is the moonglade robe and uh, this is also chromie time piece so you get it from the mechana in the neverstorm and the outland and it drops from pathleon the calculator a really really good chess piece a red a yellow and a blue socket as well as a socket bonus 
for your wrists, you're going to want to go back to BFA and go and get the Sea Dog Cuffs. This drops from Freehold. No, <laughs> this drops from Trothak in Freehold in Salvantara Guard Sound. So this is a BFA dungeon. Again, chromy time, so you can't run through it, unfortunately. But really good stats on this. Really good one to get. You probably may have gotten this during BFA and then vended it. If that's the case, I am... Um, Sincerely sorry, <laughs> you're gonna have to go get it again. <laughs> Your hands, you're gonna want to go get the Fell Bat Lover Gloves. These drop from Cordana Felsong in the Vol the Wardens in Salvan Asuna. Uh, again, chromy time, so bring a buddy. It does come with a prismatic socket, which is very, very, very useful. For your waist, you're going to want to get the cincher of Azurite Arsenal. This can come with a socket if you roll for it, and it drops from the Night Captain Valerie. Uh, in Tolgadogo in the Eastern Terror Guard Sound. I don't know why I'm struggling talking today. My apologies. That's Tolgadogo in the Eastern Terror Guard Sound. For your legs, you're going to want to get the Moonchild Leggings. These drop from Brogok in the Blood Furnace in Hellfire Ramparts. So again, chromy time, bring a bud. Hey, okay. So next up is the Sentinels Eternal Refuge. These are for your feetsies. These can actually be bought on the auction house. So instead of crafting them yourself, I would probably recommend buying them from the auction house. They shouldn't be too expensive. And hopefully you're doing this now and not during Mage Tower, where these will be extremely expensive because these can be worn by a multitude of classes and have three prismatic sockets, as well as big stat increases so hopefully you already got them but if you don't don't worry about it you can actually make these yourself with your professions if you have level working make sure to level it all the way up to legion so legion i think it's level 60 for this and then go and collect the mats it shouldn't cost you too much but if you want to make it as cheap as possible you can actually go and farm all the mats yourself instead of just buying it from the auction house so you've got three ways to buy this you can either make it yourself and farm all the materials you can make it yourself and buy the materials or you can just buy it directly out from the main shower and if you want to save time i recommend doing that because that's what i did also to do with professions is the soul stone ring this is your first ring slot uh this is actually jewel crafting it's culturian jewel crafting so bfa again if you did jewel crafting back in bfa you've probably <laughs> made a bunch of these comes with a prismatic socket very, very cheap on the auction house if you can't be bothered crafting it yourself. But again, I do recommend crafting it yourself because if you've got dual crafting, it doesn't take a lot to get the mats for this. I think it's literally like 10 yellow gems and you've got it. So very, very quick and easy ring. If you're going to get anything from this list, I recommend getting this ring because prismatic sockets, good stats, can't go wrong. Your second ring saw is Samid's Vision Ring. This is a BOE, so you're probably gonna buy it on the auction house. It's not available on my auction house, weirdly. Wait, is it? Oh yeah, it is. It's actually listed on the auction house right now and not for a lot of money. I think it's about 60K I bought mine for. But the reason why you're gonna wanna buy this on the auction house and not farm it is because of the drop rates. The drop rates are incredibly low, 0.4%, 0.3%, 0.2%. It's an open world farm, so there's no other way to get it other than farming it from these bosses. It's a really good ring as well, especially that verse for vengeance. Guys, you're going to want to get this ring to prismatic sockets as well. I would focus this as much as possible if you've only got a little bit of gold. Buy this over the soulstone ring just because of that plus 50 verse. Yeah, just 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 go get it, okay? <laughs> For your first trinket slot, you're going to want to go back to 9.0, unfortunately, and get the decanter of Anima Charge Winds. Now, you can get this from just heroic and uh, normal Sanguine Depths. I ran this um, probably like mm, six times, I think, before it dropped, and it dropped on heroic. It doesn't make any difference if it drops on heroic or not, because it can't be enchanted, and then the overall eye level gets scaled to 50 anyways. This drops from General Carl, which is the last boss of Sanguine Depths in Revendra. It is the Windscarred Whetstone. This is your trinket. It drops from Advar. <laughs> it drops from Advisor Melandrus from the Court of the Stars in Surima. That last trinket was actually quite difficult to get. It has a lowish drop rate. So here are some alternatives for ones with a little bit of a higher drop rate. These are raid drops. You do not need to be in chromatime for these because it doesn't matter what eye level they drop at. 
the ravage seed pod is one of the ones you're going to want to get it's from the animal nightmare and it drops from nithandra and the other alternative is the dragon spine trophy and that drops from gruel in gruel's lair so a little bit of higher drop rate if you are struggling with the wind scar you can go and get the ravage seed pod or the dragon spine um, the wind scar actually works the best with the decanter but it does have a really low drop rate so it kind of doesn't really matter too much okay that's it for gear moving on to weapons both of these weapons are crowby time so you're gonna need to go grab a friend at 39 to 45 in order for you to be able to get these because you can enchant weapons the first one is the blade fist it drops from war chief Kargoth blade fist in the shat halls in hellfire citadel and the other item is the claw of the watcher this drops from Shirak the dead watcher in or orchanan crypts i can never orchanan you know the one in um outlands terracar forest so again friend crewy time grab it so you can enchant it <laughs> Now that's your gear and your weapons sorted, you're going to want to look at enchants. So the only enchants that you're going to be kind of like cucked by is the stuff that is eye level specific. So again, if you've got a legion enchant for a neck, because for example, say that's the only one that exists, you're going to want to make sure that the neck item that you've got is a low enough eye level to match the legion enchant, which is why it's really important to get things in chromie time. The only ones that are going to be eye level locked are the ones that are Chromie timed, so don't worry about the rest of the one. Excuse the ratchetness of this, but here are the enchants that you're going to want to get. So for your back, you're going to want to get any Shadowlands enchant of choice. It doesn't matter. Your shoulders is a Chromie time piece, so you're going to want to get the Legion loot boons. Your chest is also a Chromie time piece, so you're going to want to get the Eternal Skirmish. Your wrists are also a Chromie time piece, so you're going to want to get Shaded Hearthing. Your hands, again, also a chromie time piece. You're going to want to get the six agility. Your waist, a chromie time piece. You're going to want to get the living steel belt bucket. Your legs, also a chromie time piece. You're going to want to get the shadow leather leg armor or the leather working leg embossment. Your feet are legendary, so it doesn't matter, but you're going to want to get the eternal agility. Both of your rings, you're going to want to get the accord of versatility. And for your weapons, you're going to want to get dancing steel, for the 30 to 50% uptime on agility. If you can't get that, that's fine. Here are some alternative weapon enchants as well. But for the most part, you can kind of use whatever weapon enchant that you want. This is like the min max sort of area. Lastly, moving on to flasks, oils, and pots. For your weapon weight, you're gonna wanna use the adamantite weight stone. For your offhand, you're gonna wanna use the superior mana oil. Flasks, great flask of the current. Pots, Superior Battle Potion of Agility, Potion of Prolonged Power, Food, Skewed Eel, Alternative Food, Pandaria Treasure Noodle Cart Kit, Gems, the Delicate Queen's Garnet, the Deadly Amantrine, and the Glinting Shadow Song Amethyst. Single use gems, you're going to want to use Nightmare Tear Saber's Eye of Agility, or the Kraken's Eye of Agility, or the Lethavian's Eye of Agility. And for your runes, just a defiled augment rune. So you may have noticed that there was pretty much no difference between Havoc and Vengeance, and that's because there really isn't. In current content, obviously there is, there's a bit of a stat priority, but we are trying to min-max things for time walking, so the only thing that really matters is your sockets, to be honest. It, it, it's just your sockets. So as long as you prioritize gear that one can be enchanted and two has sockets then you're, you're laughing a huge thank you to the time walking discord group who put together and have put together a massive slew of time walking gear specifically just for time walking i pulled a lot of this information from that spreadsheet they don't have a specific section for mage tower at least not yet and i've not seen anyone else do this yet so i figured that i would kind of dig my way through the data that was already there and handpick items that would be really suitable for mage tower based on the disabled procs the eye level restriction and sockets and this is what i came up with 
hopefully it works for you. Hopefully you managed to get a few of these items. It took me maybe two, three hours and I've already got seven items off this list, gear specific. And I'm working on a couple of other ones. The raid one should be fairly simple. Okay, that's it for me. I'm gonna leave my Demon Hunter Time Walking Mage Tower spreadsheet for the gear and chance, etc. in the description below. So you can reference that at a later time. If you guys enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want more stuff like this. This is a new channel, so I really appreciate any support that I get. And it's also really, really useful for the time and effort that I put into videos like these. I want to know if they're useful for you, so do let me know. I hope you have a wonderful time in World of Warcraft, and I really hope that you enjoy the Mage Tower. Remember, it's all about having fun, and don't stress yourself out collecting these items. You can go in and still blaze it with basic ass bitch gear. I believe in you. <laughs> have a wonderful, wonderful rest of your day, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye!